mentioned on my Instagram story that I am super passionate about Spanish and really working on my fluency um, around that language. Obviously, I'm flu fluent in English and my goal is to become fluent in Spanish. And so that's what this video is going to be about. Five tips that I have for when you're trying to get started with learning um, Spanish, what I would suggest that you do. So if that's something that you're interested in and you're like, oh, I would love to learn another language, I would love to learn Spanish, uh, or I'm sure you can apply these tips to any language, um, but this is what helped me when I was first getting started learning Spanish years, years, years ago, and they're the actual the same foundational steps that I'm currently using now to uh, reestablish my proficiency and increase my fluency. So. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in, learning a second language is something that you've always been curious about, stay tuned. suggest um, when learning a new language is decide the first step of, of, of this entire process is deciding which language you want to learn and you want to focus your attention on and really establishing like a reason why especially if you're trying to become extremely fluent why do you want to learn this language what interests you about the culture and the people who speak this language because all of those factors really go into um, how committed and consistent you are going to be with your practice, um, with anything that you're trying to learn, any skill you're trying to develop and perfect in your life, consistency and commitment are key and practice makes perfect. Basic things that, that everyone knows, but it's essential to reiterate those. So for me, I chose Spanish a long time ago because I have this um, love for Latin American culture. I live in Texas. I have family that speak Spanish. I have family that are Mexican American. I have close friends that are Mexican American. And Mexican culture in Texas, the Hano culture in Texas is huge. Tex-Mex culture here is big. It's a very, um, there's a lot of Hispanic heritage. There's a lot of Latino influence. So for me, it was a natural selection growing up that I was curious about Spanish and that was where I wanted to focus my time and attention. Um, and I was very passionate about it. I love the food, I love the music, and I just love the culture. So it was an easy pick for me. When you are picking the language you wanna focus on, really make sure you understand why because that's gonna motivate you when you don't wanna practice and you don't want to review the material and it starts to get challenging and difficult. Um, and you're getting past learning the pleasantries and actually building sentences and syntax and sentence structure, it's tricky, it's hard, you know? So make sure that it's a language that you, like, that you are passionate about in some way and there's some real reason, there's some sticky skin in the game reason why you're trying to learn it. So the first step is to pick a language and really understand what interests you about the la that language and the culture of the people associated with that language. My next suggestion when you're trying to build a foundation of learning a language, it can be really overwhelming. But a basic place to start, once you've picked and identify a language that interests you um, and that you're committed to, the next step is to learn the alphabet of that language. When I learned Spanish, um, I was pretty young. I was like in the sixth grade or so, which I guess that's kind of young. But anyways, I our, our teacher, Senora Vasquez, she was from Puerto Rico and she was phenomenal. And every single day we reviewed the alphabet. We said the days of the week, the date and the months. We started with things that were very familiar to us, but before we could even pronounce any of those words, we had to learn the alphabet. We had to understand the different pronunciation 
um, the different sounds and syllables that make up the words of that country, of, of, excuse me, of that language, so that we could be able to start sounding things out and understanding how to roll our tongue, how to say things. So learning the alphabet is super important. Particularly in Spanish, there are a handful of extra letters that are not present in the English alphabet, i.e. the double R or the CHE or the ñ. Those are not letters that the English alphabet has and they have different sounds when you see them in words. And so you have to be privy to that to, so that when you're sounding things out and you're learning new vocabulary, you know um, how to place them and how to sound them. So the second step is definitely learning the alphabet. If it seems overwhelming learning entire sentences or basic phrases, it's okay, just start with practicing the alphabet of that country. And there's tons of videos out there on the alphabet um, for any language that you wanna use. I'm happy to run through the Spanish alphabet for anyone that would be interested. So drop a comment below if that's something that you would wanna see, um, because I can definitely go through the alphabet and the different sounds and syllables with you. And it's just a great place to start in Spanish and English mirror each other in some ways. So it's, it's really easy to learn the Spanish alphabet, but that's a great second step. The next step after you pick your language, you start learning the alphabet, understanding the basic sounds and syllables that make up that dialect. Um, the third thing that I would suggest is to take a day in the afternoon and pull out good old Google Translate and label everything in your house and or work area, um, areas in your house that you frequent often. Um, your whole house, label, label your whole house. And the reason uh, with, uh, when I say label, what I mean is take little sticky notes and label your whole house with the uh, Spanish version of the word that you're trying to learn. So for example, I might, I'd walk in my house, I'd label my door, puerta. I'd label my table, la mesa. I might put a sticky note pointing to the floor, el piso. I put another sticky note leading to the bathroom, el baño. I put another sticky note entering the kitchen, la cocina. The reason why you're doing that is because you want to start to build a familiarity with the things that are all around you. Start creating some like sight words that you're looking at every day of things that are very common and relevant to you. You know, your apartamente, like making sure you have those words. So find everything in your house and label it. I am not actually in my house right now. I'm in the Tri Randall studio, so I nothing in here is labeled. But at my house, that's another step that I've started to do. And I'm happy to do a video on that, of me going through my apartment, labeling my house, uh, and labeling the different items in my house. And then you can build upon that over time and take those labels and add different words or adjectives associated with that specific item. So if I'm in the kitchen, that's la cocina, and, in, and when I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking, estoy cocinando, different things like that. Like, so you can begin to build a foundation. Right now, your goal is to just build a foundation. So the best thing to do to, to, to start getting familiar and immersing yourself a little bit more is label your whole house. Everything in your house is pretty familiar to you and that gives you an easy opportunity to start exposing you to some fun foundational words that are relevant to you and it'll make them easier to remember. I highly suggest setting up an accountability practice schedule and I also suggest starting light depending on what's motivating your goal say you have a trip to Spanish in December I mean Spanish what the fuck say you have a trip to a Spanish speaking country at the end of the year which with all this COVID nonsense going on I doubt that you do but if you do and that's your motivation for learning Spanish maybe you would set up a more aggressive practice schedule versus if you're like I just kind of to be conversational and be able to greet people and be polite um, at a high level I don't really have aspirations of being fluent then maybe you have a lighter more lax practice schedule it's really on you but the work you put in is are is going to directly correlate to the work you get out and the only way to hold yourself accountable for that is to set up a practice schedule and the final step that I will suggest is kind of a vague one but I can, I can give a lot of suggestions, 
It's to immerse yourself. The only way that you'll become conversational or fluent is to immerse yourself. That's not true for everybody. Some people can study a language out of a textbook and pick it up like that. However, for me, I need to interact with people. I need to read it. I need to hear it. I need to be in immer immerse. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I didn't like any of that. I need to immerse myself in the language. That way I can become better. And that is honestly how I got such a solid foundation in Spanish to begin with of the fucking language. I'll just be honest. For me, it's just a personal thing. I just love it. So I had no issue immersing myself and it made a huge difference. I listened to the music. So like, you know, I was all about the bachata, the duranguense, the reggaeton. Like I listened to all of that music. I listened to Spanish pop, like Spanish rock. Juanes. Like I, yeah, like I just was all about it. And I was really interested in becoming fluent. So it was easy for me to immerse myself. The one thing that I do kind of wish I would have done is studied abroad because I know that if I would have done that I would be a thousand times more solid in my Spanish practice but it's never too late to do something like that so immersion is huge and it doesn't have to be such a grand gesture if you're thinking of small ways to start immersing yourself um, especially right now while we kind of have to do everything really virtually and we have to keep each other keep stay quarantined you can be reading books, looking at literature, looking at Spanish music, watching Spanish YouTube videos, watch your favorite mu movie in Spanish. Okay guys, so those are my five tips and just to quickly review them again, the first tip that I have for learning a new language is to pick one and truly understand why that language is important to you and what interests you about the language, the people and the culture associated with it. Um, the next thing that I would suggest is to learn the alphabet of that language, learn the alphabet, practice the sounds and syllables so that you understand the foundation of how they build words. Um, the third suggestion would be to label your house and common areas. I would do, I would say whenever we can go back to work to do the same thing as well, because it really helps you because those items are things that you're looking at every day. So labeling them with the translated word of the language that you're trying to study. So for example, labeling them with the Spanish translation is a great way to start picking up on some sight words. Um, the fourth would be to set up dedicated practice time. If you're serious about learning a new language, you need to be serious about the way that you're going to go about it. And it's the system that matters more than how perfect your pronunciation is or things of that nature, okay? And the fifth thing is to find ways to gently immerse yourself. Once um, the quarantine is lifted and we can intermingle again, in most areas, there's meetup groups where there are, you know, particularly from a, a Spanish speaking standpoint, there are Spanish speakers who want to meet up with people who speak English and vice versa. Um, and most of these meetup groups are free. There's so much online content and tools. Um, there's just so many things out there in different ways. You could do simple things like just turning on the Spanish news every day, picking up a Spanish book, looking at Spanish videos. As I suggested earlier, watch your favorite movie in Spanish. Um, there's just different ways for you to immerse yourself in the culture, but try to meet people who speak the language. Try to force yourself to get uncomfortable and really actually have to practice because um, that's the only way that you're gonna get better and better and better at it is if you just fall into that discomfort. So those are my top five tips for how to get started learning a new language. I hope this was helpful. And as I mentioned, they'll have some other videos to come. Let me know what you guys like would like to see. Would you like to learn more about the Spanish alphabet or maybe like top five phrases you can use when traveling? Let me know. I've got all the time. <laughs> all the fucking time, okay? But until next time, it's your girl, Typical Tenille, and you know, rate, comment, subscribe, do you think down below, and I'll see y'all later.